All right, President Trump dialing up Rush Limbaugh on the 30th anniversary of the conservative host radio program. And something new the commander in chief had to say about a potential government shutdown caught our attention. Listen. Well, if you do it before, there's a lot more pressure to get a great solution, but it's riskier. If you do it afterwards, there's less pressure, there's less risk. Uh, I'm just not sure you'd ever make as good a deal. I, I will say a lot of good people, though, would, you know, would ask me in the nicest of ways, could we do it after the election? So, <laughs> I bet. You know, and, and they've been good to me. I've had a lot of uh, I've had a lot of good support within the Republican Party. And. You saw the poll numbers in the Republican Party. They like me, so I have to keep them a little bit happy. Hmm, so is that music to Capitol Hill Republicans' ears? Let's talk about it with tonight's panel. Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and WMAL in Washington radio host Larry O'Connor. Welcome to you both. Hi, Shannon. Uh, we, Hi, Shannon. We've heard a lot about the president saying, like, I, listen, the congressional leader said we thought we had an understanding. He's still out there talking about the shutdown. But Leslie, today, tempering that a bit, saying, these folks have been good to me. I'm taking that into consideration. Maybe the shutdown is before. Maybe it's after the midterms. It is so not typical of the president to change his tune and to talk out of both <laughs> sides of his mouth on an issue. I'm shocked. Look, in my opinion, the president saying, we're going to shut down the government if I don't get what I want is tantamount to my kids when they were toddlers at Target in the aisle in the toy section not getting what they wanted. When he says, I don't care about politics, this isn't political, well, we know that's not true because I'm sure a lot of Republicans said, look, Mr. President, if you do this before the midterms, we we could lose one or both mm -hmm. chambers uh, in Congress, and that's why it would be after. He even admits, though, it wouldn't be as good a deal after. Right. So basically, we're finding out it's political, and it's not a good deal, which most well, uh, most Americans don't want to begin with. I've had a lot of meltdowns in Target as well, because there's a lot of stuff in there, Larry, that I would like to get, <laughs> and my card is often very full. Uh, with that in mind, though, I mean, the president has said, listen, we lose some of the leverage. He thinks, the yeah. GOP does, if you don't uh, make this deal with the Democrats and force them into this before the midterms. But he also admits it is a bit of a gamble, especially in these swing House districts, um, where they may not want to see such a hard line on the wall and on immigration. Yeah, and, and leave it to Rush Limbaugh, by the way, 30 years in getting a juicy headline from the president today that uh, good for him I, I gotta say conventional wisdom has always said that a government shutdown is toxic politics for republicans but this president has always turned conventional wisdom on its ear I, I think that there's actually some political benefit to tell the american voters that you stand for something and by the way you stand for something as important as border security national security enforcing our immigration laws and one other thing keeping your promises. This president is trying to keep his promise mm. and he can't get any cooperation from the House. The Democrats won't do anything for him. So maybe using this leverage is a good thing. Well, I actually think it's good politics to actually stand by what you believe. Well, we see continually in these rallies, as we did all through the campaign now, uh, you know, a year and a half into his administration, still the build the wall chain yeah. is still happening everywhere. All right, Leslie, I want to turn to another thing. Uh, former President Obama uh, issuing a new list of people that he's going to be helping and endorsing. Um, some notable names were left off, though, that we noted down uh, the, the t Senate race down in Texas. Beto O'Rourke, who's challenging Ted Cruz, uh, O'Rourke, now a congressman, not there. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the darling of the socialist left. Uh, she's not on there either. Does it say anything to you? Honestly, I think it's a, it's a smart thing. He can't endorse everybody, first of all. Second of all, when he says he's going to endorse, he's not only uh, you know going to be uh, out there, he's physically going to be going to these places. And he has to be in districts that are going to help the individual that is running. I, I don't think that's going to be the case in a, in a red state like Texas, uh, when you look at O'Rourke. And, and quite frankly, uh, President Obama is not speaking to and not going to be as palatable to the uh, very far left uh, of center Democrats. Democrats or the people that are more moderate or even right-leaning Democrats, as we may see in Texas. So I think the list that he has, I think, is appropriate where his endorsement could help. Because we know a big name and even a former president, left or right, doesn't always help the person that is running. No, and I mean, I saw some uh, reaction tonight from the right, uh, Larry, saying, hey, bring it on. Uh, they lost more than 100, or excuse me, more than 1,000 legislative seats across yeah. states all over the country while the president uh, was then, President Obama, and while he was out campaigning and endorsing people. So they say, 
this is great. Yeah, but President Obama was the best thing that ever happened to Republicans in the last eight years across the country. I, I think that part of Leslie's analysis is spot on. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez does not need Barack Obama. That district is already finished. Uh, that would be a wasted endorsement. I think what's interesting, though, were these senators, these candidates who are running in Trump-heavy red states. The only way they have a chance of winning in those states is to run to the right, mm -hmm. run and try to be more centrist, try to appeal to those voters who are Trump voters. Uh, I think Barack Obama, who is a true leftist, he doesn't want to be associated with a Joe Manchin or a Claire McCaskill or a mm -hmm. Beto O'Rourke, who does have to appeal to those uh, red state kind of voters, because then he has to be endorsing some of their ideas, and their ideas are anathema to uh, Barack Obama, who is now free of any kind of uh, electoral uh, burdens. He's a leftist, and now he's going to be a leftist. He's the leftist he always has been. He's embracing it. Yeah. All right, Larry and Leslie, so many other juicy political nuggets we could discuss, but we are out of time, Aww. so please come back soon. Ah. Good to see you both. You bet.